Let's just say as it is. Ubisoft are victims of their own demise. What they often do is remove the features that we once loved in previous Assassin's Creed games for no absolute reason at all. And that's exactly what this video is. I've gathered 10 features that need to return in Assassin's Creed. And near the end of the video, I've also included some honourable mentions. This video will not include these features because I've already talked about them in my other video where I listed 10 features that need to return but I had a lot more to say so that's what this video is for. I'll leave a link to the other video in the description if you haven't checked it out already. Oh and do bear in mind that the 10 features in this video are in no particular order. Anyway without further ado let's get right into it. Let's kick things off with the first feature that I would love to see return to Assassin's Creed and that is two missions. These two missions were in Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and also Revelations. Yes they were kind of two missions in Valhalla but they were just so dull and focused on moving objects. The parkour in the recent Assassin's Creed games are pretty much brainless let's be honest. It's just one button and there's no challenge or fun thing about it. Since the SEO trilogy, the quality of parkour hasn't quite matched up. While Unity did expand upon the smoothness and realism of the animations, it did not capture the same skill-based platforming that was present in the earlier games. That's why in my opinion, the two missions in those games were so much fun. They pretty much feel like instead of Assassin's Creed, we'd be suddenly playing Prince of Persia. I like to think that Revelations was at its peak with the two missions. Take the Impaler's Tomb for example. Just look how mysterious and good this looks just from Ezio coming out of the ground. There were even these little mini stories attached to them, making them even more interesting to complete. Not to mention the quality of rewards you'd get from completing them. The thing that actually made these so fun was because of the parkour in these older games and it was not reliant on holding down one button. They actually required some sort of skill to them and on top of all of that, you always wanted to complete these two missions with 100% sync by completing it in a specific time, further adding to how thrilling they can be. Even the Hajiya Sophia tomb, just simply parkouring to the very top to open the floor down below was pretty fun because it involved back ejects, side ejects, balancing on thin beams, swinging from pole to pole and then ziplining to the other side of the room. There was even a main story mission in Revelations that included chasing a Templar boat where you'd be in a giant tomb parkouring on various objects of the surroundings. It's a shame we don't see anywhere near the level of these tomb design missions in the newer games. Actually that does remind me, there were tombs in Origins but they were nowhere near the level of the tombs in the Ezio trilogy. The issue with Origins tombs wasn't so much with the design but with the game mechanics. With the simplified one button press parkour approach in Origins, it was impossible to recreate the older Assassin's Creed tomb obstacle courses. Instead of it being a pretty challenging obstacle course, it pretty much turned into more of a sightseeing experience with the occasional basic weight puzzle which was just so boring to me. This specific feature is just depressing to even think about. The fact that a manual jump button is even featured in this video is a massive indicator of where the Assassin's Creed series is at right now. It's been 10 years since Unity, which was the last game to feature something similar to manual jumping with control descending. Wait hold on, can we just focus on the fact that it's been 10 fucking years since Unity? Time has absolutely flown by. Anyway there was no reason at all for Ubisoft to remove manual jumping other than to just laugh in our faces. It's weird because in a series where jumping and climbing should be the key parts of the gameplay, it's surprising that a basic feature found in most platform games is just missing. Ubisoft took out the jump button in Syndicate and hasn't included it in any game since. I'm clinging onto the false hope with Assassin's Creed Codename Red that there's going to be the return of manual jumping. I say this because Codename Red is a game that won't be on the shit engine that was Valhalla and Mirage. Instead the game will only be on next generation consoles so maybe we'll see more advanced stuff return. Oh who am I kidding? This is what false hope looks like ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty stupid especially when you consider that other games like Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part 2 which mainly don't focus on platforming at all still allow you to jump manually. Yeah I understand if they re-added the manual jump it wouldn't fix anything to do with parkour because there's a lot more elements and engine related stuff that need to be addressed. But as a famous shop in the UK once said, every little helps. And the re-addition of a manual jump button is at least a start. In the newer Assassin's Creed games, side ejects and back ejects are very specific in their use and not often helpful at all. The accuracy of predicting where you'll land when jumping is also not great, probably because there's no option to manual jump. To improve parkour and make it good again, bringing back manual jump is something I feel that should at least be step one. Or if not, at least reintroduce us to manual side ejects where it allows us to gain height whilst also remaining contextual, just like how Unity did it. Oh and by the way, I know I'm praising Unity's parkour in this part but it's not even my favourite parkour system, it's just the most refined and feels the best. This next feature is one that I understand why it was removed and that is the renovation system. If you are not aware as to what I'm actually referring to, it's where you're able to purchase buildings in the game that actually help you out. 
We first saw this in Assassin's Creed 2, where you were able to renovate various shops and landmarks within Monteregioni. These renovated buildings and landmarks then allowed you to increase the money that you would earn, give you greater discounts on items and allow you to open treasure chests. There were buildings like a blacksmith, a doctor, a tailor, an art merchant and even a bank I believe. You were also able to keep track of this progress by interacting with Claudia in the villa and collect the income you made. Of course law wise, Monteregioni pretty much collapsed when Cesare Borgia's troops destroyed the city, but regardless the renovation system in a Assassin's Creed 2 was very fun in my opinion and it's something that needs to come back. We also saw it in Brotherhood where you can renovate multiple shops, stable, aqueducts and even historical landmarks to earn money. There was also a renovation system in Revelations where you could aid the Ottoman assassins by renovating shops and landmarks in that game too. It just gave you more of a sense of progression throughout these three games and it made you want to actually commit to the renovation system. Yes there was a renovation in Black Flag, Rogue, Liberation and even Unity but it's specifically Assassin's Creed 2 is where I found it to be the most enjoyable mainly because it was more complex with how it was implemented. Instead of simply walking up to a building and purchasing it using your currency, there was a whole system for it inside one of the rooms inside Villa Auditore that let you see your progress, how much you've earned, which buildings you can buy and so on. It's a shame that Unity is the last game to do this, but even though I upgraded the cafe in that game, I didn't really find it to give us anything of use. It was more cosmetic rather than functional. I would definitely like to see it return in future Assassin's Creed games. Imagine in a game like Codename Red, where we know it's a large open world RPG game, we're able to renovate buildings that give us upgrades. These buildings would consist of pagodas, farmhouses, dojos and so on. Let me know what your thoughts are with the renovation system returning. I feel as if this feature is one that's just self-explanatory. It's a feature that should not be in this video at all, but for some reason, the more recent Assassin's Creed games are implementing less and less real life historical events. For example, take Assassin's Creed 3. I like to think that this game has probably the most historical implementation in the series. There's a battle of Bunker Hill, the Boston Massacre, the Boston Tea Party, the Siege of Boston, the Great Fire of New York and a lot more. So if we compare that to let's say a game like Valhalla, I can honestly name like one or two historical events off the top of my head and that just shows the direction where Ubisoft are taking their most popular franchise. Assassin's Creed was created with a focus on history being at its focal core and the history that we've got now is mostly fabricated. Remember when Ezio threw Cesare Borgia off a wall? That's the kind of historical and political storytelling I think Ubisoft should return to. Think of the storming of the Bastille Fortress. Those are the types of real life events I want to be part of in the game and meeting historical figures like Napoleon or Socrates. These encounters with these historical figures were great. Yeah sure we can debate aspects like combat, assassination techniques and settings of various games but for me the essence of Assassin's Creed lies in its ability to intertwine its story with real life historical events. I remember when I first booted up Assassin's Creed Liberation. One of the first things I heard in that game was the phrase history is our playground, a sentence spoken by Ubisoft themselves. Fast forward to now, we're now seeing characters like Basim taking on Jinns, Eivor fighting a giant ice troll, or Cassandra taking on giant cyclopses. Yeah sure these moments are cool, but I think we're forgetting the very essence of why this game is called Assassin's Creed, and not Mythical Creed. And that perfectly brings me to the next feature that needs to return. Now I'm giving Ubisoft the benefit of the doubt for this particular feature and that is the return of classic Assassins vs Templars. I understand this particular feature might not be agreed with by everyone. I feel like the older Assassins pre fans would like this but the newer generation probably prefer what we currently have going on. So it is hard to please every set of fans. Now the reason I give Ubisoft the benefit of the doubt for this feature is because of the last few Assassin's Creed games. They're not exactly focused on a time period where there were classic Assassins vs Templars. In Origins it was before the Brotherhood was even a thing. In Odyssey, well I don't think I need to explain. And then there's Valhalla which was focused on Vikings, Proto Assassins and Proto Templars. Yes we had Mirage but that was focused on the Hidden Ones vs the Order of Ancients. What I want to see is the return of traditional Assassins vs Templars. I'm talking about what we've seen in the older games where the Assassins and Templars were already established. In a game like Assassin's Creed 3 is where I found the Assassin Templar conflict to be at its peak. We had Templars like Haytham Kenway, Charles Lee and so on, versus Assassins like Kana and Achilles. Now the good thing about this is that we'll see the return of traditional Assassins and Templars in the next Assassin's Creed game being codenamed Red. In that game we'll see Japan in the 16th century, so the good thing is we'll see the original Assassin Templar conflict again. Now don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the recent games, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss seeing traditional Assassins fighting Templars and vice versa. It was cool to see how the Brotherhood came into fruition and the origins relating to it. 
but I feel like we need to move on now and go to the more later time periods closer to the present day. God knows what Assassin's Creed Odyssey was about. We had the Cult of Cosmos in that game and that was a completely separate group that worked together with the Order of Ancients. And then after Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they quite literally had no impact at all. I wonder what the Cult of Cosmos are up to now. Now moving on, the next feature that I would like to see return to Assassin's Creed is being able to disarm enemies and encounter them. If you're not aware as to what this actually looks like, it's where let's say an enemy is attacking you with their sword or spear, and with perfect timing you're able to grab their sword and counter them by killing that enemy with their own weapon. This was one of my favourite movesets in combat in the older games, and it's such a shame that it was removed to facilitate the combat we have today. I think my favourite counter kill animation was in Assassin's Creed 2 where Ezio disarmed an enemy with a spear and counter killed him. It was cool because we saw the body slowly starting to slide down to the ground. I think overall, Assassin's Creed 3 would have to be the game with the best counter kill animations, so seeing the downgrade of them is pretty sad to see. Counter kills were seen as making the game too easy, but after seeing the current combat system, I think I'd prefer the disarm and counter kill animation for each enemy, over the repetitive button pressing until the final enemy activates the death animation. In the upcoming Assassin's Creed games, the issue of difficulty can be solved by introducing counter moves that don't don't always result in a one shot kill. This way you could still get that visually striking counter kill animation, but some enemies would need more than one counter attack to defeat. Personally, I think this approach would improve the overall flow of combat, as you need to be more strategic about which enemies require multiple counters. The good thing about the next game being codenamed Red is that there's apparently going to be a new set of combat stances, so maybe with these stances we'll see the return of disarm and counter kills. Replayable missions was a feature that was available in quite a lot of Assassin's Creed games, but it's also a feature that was removed from the more recent games. I guess it does kind of make sense considering we had an RPG trilogy of games, and replayable missions in a large open world game does seem quite difficult to pull off, but it's also not impossible. Bringing back missions that can be replayed will increase the game's lasting appeal and longevity. It would allow you to test the skills with more challenging levels, aim for 100% synchronization, or even try different ways to complete a mission. The removal of replayable missions is not just a exclusive to Assassin's Creed because I'm pretty sure a game like Watch Dogs that's also made by Ubisoft suffers from it as well. There's a wealth of character builds and intricate level designs, even in smaller locations like Outposts. But without the opportunity for repeated experimentation, how can we fully grasp the game's mechanics and level design? Experimenting in the open world is one thing, but it's not the same as engaging with a great design level. The ability to replay specific parts is important for fully appreciating everything these games have to offer. That's why in games like Unity and Syndicate, in terms of gameplay, I definitely had a lot of fun. Simply because we're able to replay different aspects of the game and take a different approach compared to the first attempt. Of course the main reason that replayable missions were removed is related to the design of levels in the more recent games. In reality it's partly that, but I also believe that implementing such a feature would be quite complex, and perhaps Ubisoft doesn't benefit enough to justify the effort required, so they just pretty much ignore the issue altogether. There's also the structure of missions in the RPG games. These missions are somewhat disorganised, unlike earlier Assassin's Creed games with well defined sequences, games like Origins and Odyssey overwhelm you with a shit ton of quests. In fact there's a total of well over 100 in each game, so to give us a replay option for all of these missions, or even just for the main storyline would likely be too much effort for Ubisoft. Ok now this feature might be on the less popular side, but it's one that personally I'd love to see return, and that is armour degradation. If you don't know what that means, it's basically when the armour that you're wearing would wear down and become less efficient over the course of a game. Now we did see this feature available in the earlier Assassin's Creed games, and correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure it's not been in any other Assassin's Creed game after. Now why I personally want this feature to return is because in combat, instead of just spamming the attack button and tanking the damage you take without any implications, you had to dodge and parry effectively so that when an enemy attacked you, you were forced to worry about repairing your armour. In the games that did have armour degradation like Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and Revelations, the more your armour was being attacked the less effective it became. So if you had an armour with let's say 5 bars, slowly that would reduce the more you get attacked, which is also an immersive thing if we're being honest. To counter this, blacksmiths played a very important role, as they were the ones you'd go to to repair your damaged armour. Of course this feature was removed after the trilogy, and Ubisoft opted for a more diverse and customizable gear options, without the need for regular maintenance or repair. Whilst this did allow for more customization and variety in combat, it did move away from the realism aspect of the series that we've seen in earlier games, so I'd love to see this feature return. 
Okay, so we're approaching the end of the 10 features. And for the second last one, I've gone with the Hidden Bay combat feature to be a returning thing. I know I'm not the only one in this boat that feels this, but being able to primarily fight enemies with just a hidden blade was pretty fun, because not only was it often difficult, but it forced you to be so precise with perfect countering. It was disappointing to see that this was not a returning feature for Assassin's Creed Mirage, because after all, Ubisoft's focus on that game was to bring back the OG fans and make Mirage feel like the older Assassin's Creed games. If I remember correctly, in the first Assassin's Creed game, you cannot just block incoming attacks when fighting with the hidden blade. You have to time it perfectly or you get hit. Of course this limitation makes sense for a weapon like the hidden blade. In one of the Assassin's Creed books, I remember reading a part where the hidden blade broke during a sword fight. It's designed more for stabbing than blocking and parrying, and it's made from a lighter alloy than the heavier metals typically used in swords. We kind of saw this return in Valhalla with the whole play dead mechanic where you perform a hidden blade sneak attack when a guard would check on you, but that was so different in a way. It's not pure hidden blade combat. Yes, it was a cool feature, but I never really found a use for it or utilized it much in gameplay at all. In the older Assassin's Creed games, one of the best gameplay features was how the hidden blade worked in combat. With other weapons, counter attacks inflict a lot of damage but don't necessarily kill the enemy unless their health is already low. However, the hidden blade is different. It guarantees a one hit kill on full health enemies with a successful counter attack as long as the timing is precise. The timing for this move is quite strict, so it's essential to get it just right. The whole hidden blade mechanic fits well with the theme of the assassins. If you think about it, assassins are competent with swords, but they're facing experienced soldiers accustomed to fighting sword wielding opponents. The hidden blade is a tool that unexpectedly extends from the wrist and is something that even the most skilled soldier would not anticipate, making it the perfect surprise attack tool. This is why hidden blades are not common weapons. They require a high level of skill to use effectively, a skill that assassins are specifically trained for. Now the last feature before I talk about some honourable mentions is co-op. I definitely know that this feature is kind of 50-50. A lot of people will love to see co-op return, but there's a lot of people that would not like it to return. Of course the best and only example of this is the co-op shown in Unity, which I quite loved a lot. That was before the servers went to shit. We've seen Ubisoft implement co-op into their other games like Far Cry and The Division, so it's kind of weird that it's only in one Assassin's Creed game. The fun of being stealthy and parkouring around with friends or even at times random people was definitely a unique experience in the franchise. I don't really understand what's going on with Unity's co-op now because like 10% of the time I can get into a game, but the other 90% is impossible and it feels like the servers are dead. My only issue, except for the servers of course with Unity's co-op, was how all 4 players played with Arnold, which personally for me kind of felt a bit weird. In Unity, the co-op mode was effectively integrated as it connected to the modern day storyline through the Initiates, and it fit well within the historical context, since Arnold was one among many assassins in Paris. However, in Syndicate, the story establishes that the only assassins in London are Henry Green, Evie and Jacob Fry, so I guess the reason for introducing any kind of multiplayer in this setting would have disrupted the immersion and negatively impacted the overall story. But this is co-op and it has nothing to do with the main story, so this whole immersion breaking stuff to me just sounds like bullshit. We might see it return with Assassin's Creed Infinity which has Project Invictus within it that focuses on multiplayer. For me, co-op in Assassin's Creed has too much potential for it to be overlooked. I can sort of see why Ubisoft has not introduced it again. They might not want to deal with server stuff or if anything goes wrong, they don't want to take the blame. But that's exactly what's wrong with Ubisoft. They are simply too scared to innovate and that is why Ubisoft are the laughing stock of the video game studios. Okay now that's my 10 features I'd love to see return in Assassin's Creed, but I've also got some honourable mentions. Now before I do get into them, the reason I did not include these in the actual video and then title this video 13 features that I need to return is because I'm kind of 50-50 on these features. So I figured putting them in honourable mentions is the best way to go. The first one is the return of Unity's lockpicking. Now I'm definitely in the minority here, but I actually enjoyed lockpicking chests in Assassin's Creed Unity and just being able to upgrade skills to help with the difficulty of lockpicking chests was something that I enjoyed doing. We did see this feature return in Syndicate, but it's Unity's lockpicking feature that connected with me the most. The reason I'm 50-50 with this feature is because I know how difficult lockpicking chests in Unity can be. Often at times it would be a bit glitchy, but then that's just Unity as a game. Now the next honourable mention is the return of one protagonist. The reason it's an honourable mention is because whilst I would love to see one protagonist return, I also don't mind seeing two, so it's a bit of a sticky situation to put myself in. When Assassin's Creed games had one protagonist, I felt like the story and character development of these characters were a lot more interesting than two. In games like Odyssey and Valhalla where you can either choose a female or male protagonist, the character development of either Cassandra, Alexios, male Eivor and female Eivor was definitely lacking. I guess that's the problem with implementing 
presenting a choice in gender, it's hard for Ubisoft to fully create lore for the main character. Now the last honourable mention is the return of 100% synchronization. This feature out of every single feature in this video is definitely the most split in terms of fan reception. I know there's a lot of people out there that hate 100% sync because it forces you to play how the game wants you to play and it does not let you explore different paths. There's also going for platinum trophies. The 100% sync made it a lot more difficult but the reason I wouldn't mind seeing it return is for that extra challenge. In the older games being able to 100% a mission was very satisfying and it made doing that mission all the more worthwhile. While. The older Assassin's Creed games were not hard at all, so I guess the 100% sync challenges made up for the lack of difficulty. So there you have it, that's 10 features I'd love to see return in Assassin's Creed. I've also included some honourable mentions too. If you haven't seen the other video I made where I listed 10 features I'd like to see return then check out that one too because it contains stuff that's not listed in this video. Anyway if you did enjoy this video be sure to hit that subscribe button and with that said I'll see you in the next one.